let's look at something called selective edits. Now these features are available for people who are um, basically members, they're, they're paying their monthly subscriptions and this unlocks these selective edits. And this is really where we can now start competing with the programs such as Lightroom Classic. I reckon we can do 90-95% of anything that we can now do in Lightroom Classic and uh, so I could quite happily edit uh, all of my images to folio or professional standards without ever going into Lightroom Classic again. I still need Lightroom Classic at the moment but I see a day coming where maybe I could just use Lightroom CC. So um, the little icon that you should draw your attention to is the little circle on the extreme right hand side with the little dots running around it. And uh, once we click on that, we are given the choice of choosing an adjustment brush, uh, a radial filter, or a linear filter. So let's start off with uh, maybe adjustment uh, brushes. But before we actually apply adjustment, we've got a little bit control over what sort of brush that we start painting an adjustment with. So um, if we click on that, top icon in the tool. This controls the size of the brush. Now you need to slide your finger up or down to increase or decrease the size of the brush. Uh, Lightroom will show you an overlay to show you what that brush, brush looks like. Not where you're painting but give you a, a, an idea of how big that brush now is if you start painting with that brush. Uh, the next brush um, or icon down is called Feather. It's how um, it controls how sharp or soft the edge of that brush is. Now most of the time you do want to have the feather set very very low. Maybe a minimum 0% and that's because um, we do uh, want 100% uh, feather there. We want maximum feather. We want maximum softness there. This is to disguise the fact or hide the fact that we're actually adding adjustments. If the brush has a hard edge, everybody's going to see our brush strokes where we've painted with more exposure or left less exposure. We want the adjustments to fade in and out very gradually. The next icon down is called Flow. This is usually kept very high, but for people who want to paint an adjustment with repeated strokes rather than with a single stroke, we can lower the flow so we can build up the adjustment by uh, moving our finger or stylus over the same area multiple times. So I told you I'd revisit this image where we were running with a negative texture adjustment. And so if we didn't want that uh, texture slider to attack the wall behind the woman, we could simply uh, apply this adjustment as a brush. We just go and get a, a reasonably soft a brush, a little bit smaller, and then just paint over the areas of the skin. If we tap the pin, we're going to get a mask overlay so we can see where we've painted and where we still need to do a little bit more painting. So it's a question of painting, tapping the pin, painting a little bit more. We can, um, uh, if we've painted over an area accidentally that we didn't want to paint to, we can move to the Erase tool and start removing that adjustment. And I'll have a, I've got a slide that I'll showcase that um, coming up. One of the things that I will often do with a radial gradient, rather than taking the time to paint it manual, I'll just ask uh, add a radial gradient with an extra half to one stop of light. It's almost like shining a soft a beam of light over the thing that I think is most important. It does draw the viewer's attention to what I want them to look at. It's a bit like moths being drawn to the light. We are drawn to sharp, brighter areas of the image. So I'll just click and drag a radial uh, over this woman's face just to add an extra half stop of light. 
Now this will flow over the edge of the face into the background. So what I'll do then is I'll just tap on that Erase tool and then just paint that adjustment away from the background so it's only left on the face. So I could do this using a brush but I just find it just a little bit faster just to drag a gradient and then remove aspects of that adjustment. Here I am adding a positive or plus texture, we could alternatively use plus clarity for this, um, over this eye of the crocodile just to re really enhance the texture and detail going on inside of this fabulous eye of this crocodile. Let's move over to one of my, perhaps my most favorite um, uh, selective adjustments and this is the linear gradients. Um, Showing you um, an, an image without the graduated or linear gradients present here. The sky, even though it's a very grey day in Melbourne here, it's about to rain, is still a bit bright and it's a little bit distracting. I want to lower the brightness of the sky to show everybody it is a grey day that was starting to look like it was about to rain. So I am going to select a linear gradient. I'm going to tap and drag my linear gradient down and I'm going to move the light, uh, the exposure slider, maybe minus one, minus one and a half stops to make the top of the image one and a half stops darker than the bottom of the image. Now we have three lines associated to each linear gradient. We have the central portion there with the pin which shows uh, the actual position of the center of the graduated filter or linear gradient. We have the top, everything above that top line. Uh, the adjustment is uh, being applied at 100% and the adjustment doesn't venture below that bottom line. So no part of that bottom part or half of the image is being subjected to that adjustment. Beware of uh, dragging these linear gradients that are too short. Again, like a hard brush stroke, people are going to be able to see the graduated filter. Now, these graduated filters are actually used by some photographers in front of their camera lenses. It is very common for a lot of landscape photographers to darken the sky one, two or three stops compared to the foreground because this is a way of representing that landscape much closer to how humans remembered seeing the landscape rather than the cameras. The skies in high contrast situation always looked a little bit brighter than we remember them when we capture them with cameras. There is the extent of the full adjustment and uh, the bottom line shows where the adjustment ends completely. Now there is nothing limiting you to just one uh, linear gradient. You, are, you can just simply tap on that little plus icon and add a second one if you need to fine tune that sky. And you can also add graduated or linear gra gradients uh, to other parts of the image. I often add a linear gradient to the bottom of the image. It almost adds like a bookend approach to the tonality so the eye doesn't fall out of the bottom of the image because it's too bright. So we're stopping the eye wandering out the top of the image and now I'm stopping people uh, eyes wandering out of the bottom of the image. So I've got three linear gradients in this particular edit. So there's a before and after. And what this is doing is it's focusing the viewer's attention on the guy pushing the pram and the bridge structure and we just get a sense of the feeling of that grey sky but we don't need to look at it. Um, it's a little bit darker than the hero elements of this image. Now a lot of photographers using um, graduated filters in front of their camera lenses they only do one thing and that is lower exposure. But in Lightroom we don't, we're not restricted to adding one adjustment to any of our linear gradients. We can add two, three, four, five adjustments to a single linear gradient. So here I'm starting off just by lowering the exposure at the top of the image by one stop and then I'm going into the color panel and I'm grabbing that temperature slider and making it cooler. This is going to not only darken the top of the sky but it's also going to cool that sky down. 
Now the reason I'm doing this is it's a twilight shot and I'm seeing that natural progression of um, warm orange tones through those cyan tones through those darker blues but because I'm shooting with um, a telephoto lens we're not seeing the blues in the image I'm captured. I'm shooting below those cooler colors so I'm pushing those cooler colors into the image so to make you aware of the color uh, palette that I was viewing when I was photographing this Sydney skyline and it's also giving me those complementary colors which I often try to achieve when using a white balance slider such as the temperature slider so uh, it's, it's achieving two things here it's showing you the, the, the colors of the sky as I experienced them but didn't quite fit into the frame of my composition and I'm also creating those complementary colors if you go onto my folio or my, some of my online folios, you will notice this is something that I do quite often because I am out and about at these um, twilight times of the day and if I am shooting with not my wide angle lenses but my uh, telephoto lenses I can't communicate that graduated filter to you or those graduated colors that I'm experiencing so I will push them in now in this instance they're coming in quite slowly compared to the previous image so I'm having to be a lot more aggressive with that slider so don't uh, start looking at the numbers when you're pushing sliders don't go oh plus 20 that sounds like a lot I think I should stop just look at the image when you're dragging that slider so and this will dictate whether you push that slider too far or not now there is a slight advantage as I said that um, we can do 90-95% of everything that we want to do in classic this is the desktop version of Lightroom CC not even the classic version but we do have a couple of added feature that haven't worked their way into the mobile version uh, at the point of time where I'm making this movie there's nothing to say it won't appear in future versions and one of those um, features that we do have in the desktop version that we don't have in my mobile version at the moment is we can paint with a brush or we can subtract from a linear uh, gradient tool and have the brush notice there's an edge and work to that edge I don't have to work very closely which is very difficult when you're working with a finger on a on a on a tablet uh, this would encourage some people maybe to uh, buy a stylus or pen so they can and then uh, pinch zoom out so they can work more accurately towards an edge um, or if you know this is proving a little bit difficult and you need a little bit more assistance just uh, put off this part of the edit until you get back home uh, the image will appear in your Lightroom catalog uh, in the last edited version that you did on your on your tablet and then you can just fine tune that linear gradient in the desktop version. Let's look at um, uh, a healing brush. This is the little band-aid icon that we can see. If we are shooting landscapes at f16 uh, we will notice if there is a little bit of dust on the sensor. If we just pinch and zoom or double tap to zoom in on that image we may be aware that our sensor isn't as clean as it should be. And the way we get rid of that detail is to go into that healing brush and just um, choose an appropriate size, a size that is just uh, bigger than the dust spot and then tap to remove that. Now some people will also want to use the spot removal for removing distracting elements i.e. not dust spots at all. This is a bird in captivity at a, a, a raptor show in the UK and it's got its little homing tag uh, trailing behind it uh, as it's flying. It's a little bit distracting so I do feel like I just want to remove that from view and the spot removal tool does allow me to do that. You can just uh, tap and uh, drag your finger over that line and if um, uh, Lightroom doesn't choose the perfect source to repair that just 
drag that secondary pin, the grey pin, to a better position for a better um, heel. Be sure to check out all of the movies in this Lightroom CC Masterclass series. There's also a supporting ebook that you can download from my website. Just head over to www.markgaylor.com and then look for that downloads link. If you find any of my resources useful, just consider making a small donation. This will help me create future learning resources. I also host a, a Patreon uh, site. This is uh, going to allow you to join Q&A forums where you'll have your individual questions answered and also attend seminars. I'll also give a photo critique service. Okay, so uh, thumbs up if you've enjoyed the movie and I'll catch you online next time.